Let's dive right in. I want to say a big welcome and hello to Jane Seymour and Cheech Marin, who are starring in the new film, The War with Grandpa. Hi, guys. Hi. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I don't know if you can see it, but the questions are already coming in. They're firing away. Our family press has a lot of questions and we want to get to those in just a moment. Um, let me, first of all, let's start off by talking about um, just how much fun this film is. Um, Cheech, let's start with you. Uh, your interactions with Christopher Walken and Robert De Niro were so fun and really very entertaining. Tell me a little bit about filming those scenes with them. Uh, well, you know, I had to stop myself from being in awe all the time, get the words out, but uh, it was great. I mean, it was a simple scene. This is the first ones we saw. We walked and talked. I could do that. <laughs> and they yes. we apparently could do that too. So, you know, it yeah. worked out okay. It did work out okay. It did work out okay. And Jane, um, I, I personally just want to know like what your beauty secret is because you look amazing. Um, but I also want to hear from you about working on this film. What made you decide to want to be a part of it? Well, I mean, to play the potential love interest of Robert De Niro is, you know, right up there. Sign me up. No. <laughs> to be in a movie with him and, and Chris and Cheech and Uma and everybody, the cast was just so spectacular. And uh, and it was just a really, really cute movie. I just thought well, I could have a lot of fun with this one. And I did. You absolutely did. And that definitely came across. Um, all right. So I want to get on over to our family press outlets. They have a lot of questions for you guys. Um, Megan Cooper, Megan, if you want to come on camera, she has a question for Jane. Go ahead. What we were just hey, talking Jane. about, Jane. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jane, you have this wonderful garden at your home and you grow some of your own food. And um, I was wondering if your grandchildren like to participate when they come over to visit you. I do. They're actually in the other room with the food. If you want a, a visual, they, they'll carry it for you. <laughs> but uh, yes, they, we've just been eating together. We've got these huge heirloom tomatoes. Um, one of my granddaughters, Willa, just made a, a cocktail from everything she found in the garden. So I, it had mint and guava and strawberry guava and lemon and gosh, everything. And, uh, but we grow everything organically. It's very healthy and uh, the kids love all that too. All right, and Cami Allen. Cami, if you wanna jump on screen here and ask your question about the dodgeball scene. Okay, let's chat about that epic dodgeball scene because it was ridiculous in a good way. Um, did you guys both fully participate or were there any stunt doubles? There were stunt doubles, but um, I personally participated an awful lot. I mean, falling down and being trampled. Yeah, that was me. But I think there was one bit where somebody threw themselves, uh, supposedly me, against the side. I can't remember if that made it into the film or not, but uh, um, there was someone dressed as me, but mostly I did my own. I did all my own jumping and uh, throwing and all of that kind of stuff. What about you, Cheech? Well, actually, I was Jane's stunt double with a wig. I was going to say that. <laughs> all you needed was a wig, right? I needed was a wig. <laughs> An ability to hit a wall hard. Uh, no, I mean, that was, I, was, I was terrified of that scene because of, of certain injuries, and I didn't want to... Uh, reactivate them, you know, because that's, that's a dangerous, I, I, when, I, when I walk, first walked into that room, I said, somebody's going to get hurt in this room. I hope it's not me, you know. <laughs> All right. And then um, Kathy, Bel Air Mommy, um, do you have a question? Kathy, are you there? There she is. There we go. Hi, thank you. Um, you guys, the movie was absolutely awesome. And I wanted to know from both of you, what drew you to your character? And what did you take away from your character and or what do you feel like you added to the characters you played um, in the movie? Thank you. Well, I was playing um, someone who was working in a, in, a, in a store, right? Like a Best Buy, or I can't remember if it was, or Fry's or something. And I had my uniform on and I, it was my first day and I was a little concerned about, you know, I didn't know how to talk to Mr. De Niro. I said, hello, and he was kind of quiet. So I thought, oh, I, I won't crowd him. And the next thing I know, I actually was working at Best Buy or whatever it was. And people kept coming up to me with their goods saying, can they get an exchange? Could they get a refund? This thing's broken. Where's the warranty? Where do you find this? And, and I was so busy dealing with personnel and people and, and clients that they then said, we need you on set, Jane, for the scene. I, oh, sorry, got to go. I'm actually here acting. It was... Um, so that's when I knew I'd really pulled off my role. 
because uh, nobody recognized me. They thought I was actually an associate at the company. Um, but I, I had the best time uh, being kind of one of the guys, uh, which is what I sort of was as part of the team. And, uh, and you know, to be behind the scenes waiting and talking and listening to all three of these guys telling their uh, their stories of, uh, of their lives and what's been going on in movies. I mean, it was just magic. Awesome, okay, and so uh, Donna, let's see, Donna has a question. Donna, if you wanna jump on and ask about, she has a question about some of the humor and the emotional moments in the film. Hi, great movie guys. Um, yeah, there was a lot of humor and some emotional moments. And I was wondering, and this was for both of you, what was your favorite or most touching scene in the movie, whether you were involved in that scene or not, and why? Well, for me, it was watching Robert De Niro sit in a rocking chair and look out the window with that music on that era of words mm -hmm. and, and just missing his wife. As mm -hmm. I, I, I said not a word and, and I was like, wow, that's, it was so slight the conveyance of emotion. I mean, but it was really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would tend to agree. I, you know, sometimes less is more. And uh, I think that really also set the tone for the whole piece because you, you do, you did know that he was lonely and he, you know, was having a problem. I, um, I loved, you know, the obviously the scene that I did with him, where he kept, you know, trying to scan things and couldn't get this thing to work. And the frustration of like, why do I have to do this with a machine when I've always have a, a woman, a person, a human being that I can talk to, and just like, ah, oh, I'm done. I, I, I thought that was really quite wonderful because I know how that feels, you know, and how easily you can walk out thinking you paid and and somehow you hadn't pressed the right button. Easily done. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Okay. And let's move over to Sarah from Scoop Show. She has a question um, about your careers and whether or not you're a fan of each other. So go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, well, I would love to know, obviously, you both are super um, successful. People know you by your names, uh, your household names and iconic. Well, I would love to know, Jane, were you a fan of Cheech and Chong's movies? And Cheech, were you a fan of Dr. Quinn and Medicine Woman? Um, great question. A great question. Actually, yes, very much so. Um, and, uh, you know, we, he used to live near, nearby me in Malibu. So I'd see him from time to time socially. And um, my ex-brother-in-law uh, uh, was in yeah, Up in Smoke. Is that the one he was in? And Nice Dreams. Oh, nice, nice dreams. There you go. So I have to catch up on more of my Cheech uh, uh, movies, but I think he's brilliant and he's a wonderful man and he's so much fun to work with. And I was obviously a, a, a fan of Jane's from Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. I think she's going to do a reboot with Dr. Quinn Emergency Medicine Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I did medical marijuana, you know. Medical marijuana. I, I did, I, and I did morphine as well. I mean, I was just touching in on that Breaking Bad world. Maybe there's a crossover that could happen there somehow with Cheech and Chong. <laughs> yes, there is. I actually <laughs> shot it, but, but Cheech wasn't there. He didn't have his product on. on uh, we'll, we'll do a remake. That can I be love it. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Good question. Good question. Okay, so let's move over to uh, Tess from Mama's Geeky. Tess, if you want to pop on, she has a question about a sequel. Yes, hi. So we heard there's going to be a sequel, and I want to know, uh, did you not know, or were we not supposed to know that already? Well, Your face. all I know <laughs> is that when I left the set, when we were shooting it all those years ago, uh, they did talk to me about a sequel in which I would be the love interest of um, Mr. De Niro. Yeah, so I was curious. They just told yeah. us that. So I wanted to know, are you super excited about it? And are you both signing on for it? Well, I would, but no one's called me. So quite you, Cheech. Uh, as soon as they call, I'm there. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully it'll be set like in Fiji, you know, or something like that. Where's something Hawaii the other day? Where are you, you're moving further away now? I am because <laughs> I've been to Hawaii, but I've only been to Fiji a couple of times. I'm, I'm yearning for something tropical right now. All right. <laughs> uh, that's understandable. Um, all right. So let's head on over to um, Mel. Mel Pezza has a question. Mel, if you want to pop on. 
Hi, um, I was just wondering, this is such a funny, lighthearted movie in such dark times that we're living through. What do you think, what do you want your audiences to take away? Families going to see this movie together. What do you want to take away from that and bring joy and stuff like that to such a dark time we're all living in? I, I think this is the perfect movie for right now. I think the timing couldn't be more perfect. You know, this is something that whether you can physically be next to one another watching it or you watch it and, and you know, get together and Zoom and talk about it. I mean, I can't wait to watch it with my grandchildren. I think it's something you watch over and over again. It makes you laugh out loud. And it um, it's, it's as interesting and, and amusing and, and poignant for all generations. That's what's clever about it. Hopefully it'll bring families together so they can see it together, you know, with their children, their grandchildren, their nieces, their nephews, their aunts and uncles, because we need a, a lot of unity in this in this country, especially right now and around the world for this, this pandemic is worldwide. Uh, so we hope that we can add something positive to that. And I think we did. Yeah. I think so too. Okay, let's head over to Mandy. She doesn't have her name in there, but it says Mandy for you. So Mandy has a question about dynamics. There you go. Hi, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. I just got to say first, Cheech, my yes. son loves you, which got me to thinking, I don't know what movies he saw with you in, but he loves you. <laughs> so this, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this movie, I mean, on screen, it was like the two groups, right? The, the old schoolers versus the, the kindergartners, kind of. I just wondered off screen, what were the dynamics between the between you and the younger kids? They were generally in school. Yeah. <laughs> Which is where they should be. Yeah, we would. <laughs> but they were absolutely wonderful. They were lovely when we had a chance to actually see them and talk to them. But you know, they 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 work, 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 and then they do school, 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 and uh, that was it. Um, all right, so let's head on over to um, Robin. Robin, did you have a question for Cheech and Jane? Yes. Hi. So the movie was full of so many comedic, funny moments. I want to know, were you guys allowed to do any ad lib or improv and how much of that made the final cut? There's a, 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 a especially in a comedy, there's always going to be moments, most of the moments where there, there's some sort of ad libbing going on because comedy has to be surprised. You know, you have to be so the, about the 15th time you say the same line and no surprise there and so you you're, you know the tendency is always to ad lib within the framework of getting the information across but uh, it was fun I'm, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure I ad libbed like the, the original script at some point I can't remember I know I ad libbed but I can't remember because I only saw it once whether they were ad libs or they were actually scripted but we definitely had a lot of fun ad libbing and uh, they're all ad lib pros so you know, there was uh, probably a lot of really funny stuff that didn't make it to the final movie, too. I bet. I bet. Like um, Sh <laughs> oh, sorry. What was that? Like the shower scene didn't make it. The shower scene didn't make it. Oh, OK, it'll be in the it'll be in the Blu-ray DVD. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Shay Wiley has a question. Shay, if you want to pop on and ask your question. Sure. Hi, you guys. I also really had to say that we love Cheech in this movie as well. And we love the dialogue between De Niro and Cheech and the scene at the Sky Zone. But I wanted to know what you guys thought. What was your favorite scene and which one did you love the most? Which one did you like filming? I think for shooting, that, that Sky Zone was, you know, a lot of, uh, it was fraught with uh, a danger. <laughs> I was I was terrified during the whole thing, and but you know it was going to come out good. You knew it was because how could you not have fun in a bouncy house trampoline deal? You know, playing dodgeball. I mean, that's yeah. yeah, it was a certain kind of lunacy too because we were all pretending that we were completely fit and able to do all of these things. Um, and I was convinced we were going to be taken out of there on stretchers, but uh, <laughs> we we had an enormous amount of fun doing that. It looks like it was a lot of fun. Um, Angela Camacho. Angela, if you want to pop on, she has a question. Hi, y'all. Uh, Thanks for having me. I have to say my family absolutely loved this film. Um, the film actually inspired my son to play a little prank on his sister. But she, he put a little hot sauce in her coffee the other day. So, uh, so you can hear her in the background. <laughs> too, too happy about that. Um, but Peach, I am a huge fan. I've been watching your movies since I was very young. Probably shouldn't have been watching them as young as I was, but I had 
teenage older you know siblings and they would watch your movies which I love by the way and I still uh, appreciate them teach what was it like uh playing wingman Danny and are you a prankster with your family in real life playing with who oh uh wingman Danny what was it like being the wingman in the movie oh and, yeah and are you a prankster in real life no, no, I'm very straight, you know, and off camera, I'm very, well, not really straight, but, uh, you know, but other than <laughs> what you see, it was great. I mean, you, you, you're you you're playing dodgeball with Jane Seymour and Chris Walken and, and uh, Robert De Niro. How could you not have fun? What you right. do you play dodgeball with Robert De Niro? How, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good question. Thank you. Okay, Patty has a question. Patty, if you want to jump on. And then Angela, turn your video off. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, we heard uh, from the Perk family a little while ago, as particularly about how hands-on Trey was with this whole film. Uh, so my question is, what do you think about the next generation of filmmakers like Trey and uh, how, how was that taking a direction or, you know, I think he got it. They said executive director credit as the he youngest. Was executive producer. He was 11. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you know, he's the one that brought the property to his father and said, hey, dad, we're going to make this. And uh, so we have to thank him for that. We didn't actually know who he was. We just saw him sitting there in the chair looking very important and walking around like he was in charge. We, <laughs> didn't, we didn't know. And then at one point he came up to... Um, Mr. De Niro and just said, good job. And I went, okay, that's interesting. How's that one gonna go down? That <laughs> made his laugh. <laughs> my, my employee, my little employee, you know, I'm, I'm the boss. So it was really sweet though, it's funny. Awesome, and then Cheech, what did you think about having this 11 year old executive producer? They said that Guinness is going to award him with um, give him some recognition as being like the world's youngest executive well, producer. That's great. I mean, I my only question was, who is this kid? <laughs> Keeps, why, and why is he on set? <laughs> He's in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's head on over to, um, you guys will see me squinting because I do not have my glasses on. Um, Amy Fulcher, Amy, let's see, you have a question. Hi, so I absolutely loved Jerry's game room in the film. It was pretty awesome. So I was wondering what you guys would have in your dream rec room, game room, retirement room, or do you already have one? Hmm. I'm yeah. in it right now. <laughs> yeah, you're covered in art, yours is right. Well, yeah, my husband, uh, and, and golf mementos. Ah. I, I say I've done a lot of golf tournaments throughout my life, and I said, and at the end, they gave you this permaplac thing with a picture of you and all the bobs you played with and so i've saved them throughout the years and they're on the opposite wall you can't see ah, let me describe them to us. was i in any of those i know we must have played golf some i don't think we've ever played golf together but i i would be willing no we did once i remember not together i was in front of you somewhere i think in hawaii or something and i got a, like a a great shot and you screamed oh, well, you've forgotten i have never forgotten and my forget that but I, I in my game room um my game room is literally the entire house um so anywhere in the house you will find paints paint brushes pencils paper that's it um all right let's see tanya has a question for jane about her character tanya if you want to pop back on hi there hi jane I loved the sass that you brought to your character. Are there any qualities that you share with Diane? A great admiration of uh, Mr. De Niro, I suppose. Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm kind of spiky like she is. You know, I, I, I'm not afraid to get up and jump and throw and do whatever it takes, you know, I'm, I'm game. That, so I've got that, yeah. 
I, I have no doubt that you have a little bit of that SAS personality <laughs> as well. Um, I bet it's so much fun to hang out with you guys. I know it's definitely been a joy to hang out with you all today. Thank you so much, Jane and Cheech, for taking the time to share with us about your experiences um, and your roles on The War with Grandpa, which opens in theaters on October 9th. Thank you so much to all of our family press who has joined us today. And we hope you guys all head out to see the movie when it opens. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful Saturday. Bye. Bye.